Hey, Lake Speed Jr. from Driven Racing Oil, back here at the Dino Cell at Shavers, taking a quick break during the middle of the testing to offer you a two for Tuesday. We're gonna answer some questions from the LSPI video series we did, and we're gonna offer a couple of tech tips. Hey, it's two Tuesday, so it's a two for Tuesday, tech tip Tuesday. So first thing we're gonna go with is a tech tip, oil level. And you may not think much about it, but we're gonna show you how long it takes for the oil level to read properly on the dipstick in a wet sump engine, especially when you're using a heavy oil like the 2050 we're using today. So by the time you pour oil in the valve cover, it takes quite a bit of time for it to get all the way down to the bottom of the oil pan where it can be read properly on the dipstick. What can happen is you can overfill the oil level fairly easily. Now that may not sound like too much. You might be saying, well, hey, you know, too much oil is better than too little oil. And to a point that's right, but too much oil actually causes two things. One, more oil is hitting the crankshaft. It's being whipped around. That causes aeration in the oil and air isn't a great lubricant. The other thing is raises the oil temperature. So the oil temperature can become very, very high. In this particular engine, just changing the oil level by half a quart will mean a 40 degree temperature difference, up or down, and 25 horsepower. Let that thing in for a second. You overfill your engine by only a half a quart too much, and your oil temperature goes up by 40 degrees, and you lose 25 horsepower. That's an easy way to gain some horsepower and keep your temperature down just by making sure you have the proper oil level. Yeah. Okay, first LSPI video series question. I have a VW Jetta 2.5 liter manual. Sometimes due to very, at very low engine speeds, I get weird knocking pinging sound. Could this condition cause LSPI? If it's a direct injection engine, the answer is yes. Okay, next question is, this guy has a Velocitor that calls for a 0W30, and he's only found one oil that actually has the API SN Plus GM Dexos 2 LSPI type spec. This is 0W30, and he's asking, can he run a 5W30 because that gives him more options? And the answer is yes, if you live in a warmer climate. If you live in Minnesota or Canada or somewhere like that where it gets really, really cold in the wintertime, you probably do need that 0W30, but if you're in a warmer climate, you can get by the 5W30, no problems. Next question is talking about the engine break-in, which we did with this very engine we were talking about. It says 25 minutes, 2500 RPM, but what kind of load, maximum full throttle? What we did with this engine yesterday, when we broke it in again yesterday, is we did 25 minutes at 2800 RPM, and we put on about 50 foot-pounds, which is about 15% load, varied the RPM a little bit. So the idea is you want to get the engine up to you know, 25, 2800 RPM right off the go so the, the oil is moving through the engine, and you want to do put some load on it for certain. I said we were running and trying to target right about 80 to 90 foot-pounds of torque is what we were looking for. So we adjusted the load about 15% of the load control nozzle to get there. So that's how you do it. You make sure you want to have load to get the ring seated. We did that 20 minute break in, hit it with two full pulls, and she was totally sealed up and broken in just from doing that. Next question. And actually two of them are related together, so we're gonna answer both of them together. They're both related to viscosity. Wanted to know about the bearing clearances and the viscosity and, and all that. So I'll just kind of summarize it and say again that looser bearing clearances require a higher viscosity oil. Tighter bearing clearances need a thinner viscosity oil. And so, if I, for example, with this engine, we were running right about two and a half thousand bearing clearance, and we're running typically anywhere from a 10W30 up to a 20W50 oil based on what we're trying to do with the test. I mean, normally when we can run this engine, we can run it as low as 0W20, but in reality, for two and a half thousandths bearing clearance, the proper viscosity oil is a 10W30. If you're running, say, three thousandths bearing clearance, you're gonna need a higher viscosity oil like a 20W50. On our website, we actually have a bearing clearance chart. So if you go to drivenracingworld.com, we've got a bearing clearance chart that shows 
what viscosity grade to run for the different bearing clearances in the different oil temperatures that makes it all really easy for you. That way, we don't have to try to describe the whole thing here right now. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching these videos. We enjoyed making them. We appreciate all your support. Have a good one.